The mask of the Red Death is upon us, my friends. The slow fever, typhoid fever, has, well, most of Nenezia in its grasp. And most importantly, even Kuloi with its 75% epidemics resistance. It's a crazy scene, year after year. Emperor Sturla the Legendary and his court are locked up. They're living from rats, from all kinds of things they find in the dungeons of the castles of Kuloi. And still, and still the epidemic does not go away. How long will we survive? Let's go. In a situation where our income has halved from all the disease and death. We're at a time where Sturla the legendary, who knows so much, is also slowly aging. Well, he's no longer fat due to the circumstances. <laughs> Maybe. But his wife is. And she might... She might bite the bullet, but probably not now, as she'll probably lose that trait once they, if they stay in there forever. Well, um, smallpox has also broken out, so um, it seems like the wrath of the gods is upon us, and we we should let let our army move. But where where will we move our army back to? to Maybe to this place. Maybe here would be a good place to flee with our armies. Realm peace has been enforced due to the epidemics, but uh, we don't really know if it will hold, as everyone is just waiting. Waiting for our sun to break down. But he's not, thankfully. He's in... Oh, and look at that! Slow fever has disappeared. <laughs> the instant slow fever has disappeared. <coughs> the instant slow fever has disappeared. We die. Emperor Sturla first feasts in Valhalla at age 30, 63. He died a natural death, he, a pious man. He spent many years and resources trying to spread the word of Odin amongst the heavens. He was also one of the most legendary emperors. He ruled for something like 50 years and my goodness, has he been a success. We are now playing as Emperor Sturla the second of Nenezia, who is also, I think, yeah, the owner of Severot, the county capital of uh, the Jaldom of Severot, and uh, we also have a new heir, Prince Magni of Nenezia. Our son, our young son, is there, and uh, oh, give me, give me a second. <laughs> We'll soon analyze Emperor Sturla II of Nenezia. This remarkably unremarkable man who has still, well, fathered a lot of children already with his um, fat and charitable wife and who is probably looking forward to leading the realm. A natural death. And Emperor Sturla comes back, at a, comes to the reign at a time where the sorrows of Nenezia might just disappear. We'll let this be a, a, a short reflection on the reign of Sturla. Uh, Sturla the first, that is, of Nenezia. Done by probably his son, Sturla the second. Now his father had reigned over Nenezia quite so many years and never really 
had a war for territory, maybe except for that little war about Helsingland. What was the success of his reign was that it was mostly peaceful. Apart from that short time when the Teutonic Orders tried to invade Nenezia, but of course unsuccessful, also thanks to the help of the likes of Saxony and Epirus. So um, that is something one can really say Sterner the I held that together. He also expanded massively the heartland of the Dovres for many years now, which is the Jaldom of Bjarmia. He built the most magnificent hospital that is known to probably the world, spotting all kinds of things and uh, attracting only the most uh, magnificent of, uh, of scholars throughout the realm and beyond. He has helped to convert many tribes that uh, had started independence also from Vladimir and uh, then rejoined Vladimir. Maybe that wasn't the best decision strategically, but it was in the later years of Emperor Sterla when he decided he would do it like that. The power of faith came back to him after, a, after an expedition into scholarship. He decided to go for faith and even before he was a man of family, reflected by the number of siblings here. And most interestingly, this number of siblings wasn't caused by concubines, no. Um, it was only caused by by this this woman, Empress Dowager Tandrik of Nenezia, with whom uh, Emperor Sterla the Legendary had all of these children. One can become fat after <laughs> After having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine children, and surviving without uh, any any sign of of uh, slowing down, Empress Dowager Tandrik of Nenezia was strong. Uh, she had to be too, and uh, she learned a lot from Sterla the Legendary. We're looking at a realm where not only Nenezia has changed, but also Denmark has expanded its influence in Africa and uh, everywhere, also due to the strong support from the North, Germanic is the dominant religion, maybe apart from the East here, where Buddhism, Taoism and Manichean is dominant. We have seen that the Chinese Empire has expanded its Western protectorates again and again. We have had uh, the wife of Emperor Sterla travel there and learn a lot about China. We've also seen that uh, Rome here, <laughs> one of the holy cities, <laughs> theoretically, of Christianity is in the hands of a Germanic ruler, village of Rome and ultimately controlled by King Dago II, the young of Epirus, of the important Ludolfinger house, which is really a very important house nowadays. And we have many marriage ties to that. You can also see that here, strangely, the, the kingdom of Maghreb is also Germanic. <laughs> and that has happened to many of these, of these empires. I mean, there are still Sunnis and other Islamic religions out there, while Christianity is certainly suffering also due to the constant support from the people from the north. There is Cathar religions here that are Lollards and that is even more dominant than Catholic one has to say. I mean there's a strong orthodox line there but 
Yeah, that's also rather an exception. And Germanic is is going going well forward, left and right. Also due to the stability of the realm of Nenezia. that has expanded, well, territorially here and there, a vassalization here and uh, another treaty there. It was just through constant pressure that this was uh, possible. Also, strangely, many exotic realms have claimed a part of, of Scandinavia, which is maybe something that the new lord of Nenezia wants to address. Finland has been beaten down again and again, and maybe one day King Scully might want willingly or non-willingly want to join the great empire of Nenezia. The most dominant hmm, rival, one could say, is probably Vladimir, which is not as strong as it was, but which is still one of the strongest out there. But there are positive relations between Nenezia and Vladimir, traditionally, and so we will not go out there and march just like that. Especially not with such a new emperor and with the ties that the old emperor had with Vladimir and the surrounding realms. So this is looking back to the realms and also the outlook we have. We have many connections due to the many, many daughters Sterla had, for example, to the kingdom of Brace and uh, to England, then to Saxony, to Prussia, to Vladimir, e everywhere in, in nearly all of the Germanic empires, there is a Dovre. Uh, doing doing something. King Skuli of Finland, for example, is a Dovre. Then in Saxony, yeah, we had a Dovre, but that was rather longer ago. We look at Vladimir and uh, we see a Dovre princess ruling along the lines, and uh, that is no exception. It's like the Dovres are the Habsburgs as well of the north here, and uh, there's no sign of that stopping, except, except for this man. Emperor Stirler of Nenezia is absolutely inept at diplomacy. His wife, thankfully, is a little bit more friendly, but that's about all. That's about all. The only, the only thing uh, he can really do well is, well, intrigue. Maybe a little bit of fighting, maybe a little bit of learning, but that is all. He is a lustful zealot and greedy. Being a zealot, he would also probably not join the Fellowship of Hell. He's deceitful though as well and fat, so he has definitely many sins. He would also probably not join the wolf warriors as he is. Well, he's kind of okay at personal combat, but that is mostly due to, as you can see, being deceitful and uh, having a great armor and short sword here. Now that the slow fever is, is going away, we maybe don't have to uh, close the court up here. We might still add it, add it. It is still slow. So that is one thing to look forward to. Another thing is, of course, the Rock of the Raven. That has been expanded, starting with Emperor Stirla to stage two, and that, that is already over halfway done. So that's also a great opportunity that will come to Emperor Stirla II of Nenezia. 
What does he want to do, though? He wants to build a war chest. Well, that's probably doable for him. We'll just wait a little bit and then he maybe wants to groom an heir. This this young man is definitely an heir to, to look forward to. He's only a child of a concubine and a spiritualist, but at least he's not sickly. He's heavily guarded, protected um, from plots mostly, and for the health, the hospitals of Nenezia will will do their thing. He might also give his young son uh, some artifacts to play around as his treasury is empty. Mm, and we'll look to choose a focus and now as we've already seen something we can probably go and decide what focus this should be. So that said, thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. We'll return to this realm with more concentrated on Emperor Stola II of Nenezia and his wife and his concubines. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Khan signing out.